Hello and welcome again to the course of mechatronics. Today we are going to deal with the temperature sensors. So basically the objective of today's lecture is to study different temperature sensors and outcome is the student will be able to explain different temperature sensors. Today we are going to go through these temperature sensors first thermocouple then thermistor then RTD that is resistance temperature detectors and lastly the biometric strip. These are the few temperature sensors which we are going to study today. So st let's start with the thermocouple. So basically uh, the diagram or rather circuit view of thermocouple is in front of you. So the thermocouple is made up of two dissimilar metal wires uh, and we are going to make two junctions. One junction which is measuring junction is called as a hot junction and the other one that is the reference junction which is called as a cold junction. So basically there are two junctions of dissimilar metallic wires uh, and we are going to connect a voltmeter in between these two junctions. So there is a uh, what we are going to do is the measuring junction is again uh, kept at the uh, source where we are going to measure the temperature or uh, we are going to touch that hot junction to the surface from where we need to uh, measure the temperature of that surface. So what happens here is thermocouple works basic on the basic principle of Seebeck effect. So when uh, there, there is a change in temperature at some junction of two dissimilar metals the potential difference is created between two junctions and that potential difference can be measured with the help of voltmeter. So again that potential difference created or the voltage generated will be proportional to the change in temperature. So uh, we can measure the temperature with the help of thermocouple with this uh, principle of Seebeck effect that is generation of voltage due to change in temperature or by detecting a temperature at one junction. So basically advantages of the thermocouples are they are very simple rugged and need no batteries for working because uh, voltage is generated because of the change in temperature directly at the junction and measure over very wide temperature ranges. So there are different types of thermocouples like J type, K type. Uh, T type thermocouples are available again the different metals which are used based on that again copper constant is there iron constant is there aluminum chromium is there so, uh, so very wide range of thermocouples is available again uh, each thermocouple will have its own range for the measurement of the temperature then disadvantage main disadvantage is the limitation is accuracy because uh, the least count of thermocouple is 1 degree Celsius so uh, plus minus 1 degree Celsius is the least, least count. It will measure the temperature. It uh, will measure the temperature either 1 degree higher or low from the uh, accurate value. If error is there, it will be large. Uh, and if there is a change in temperature in few uh, points, that is, suppose temperature is 37 degree Celsius and it has changed to 37.5, so it cannot be measured with the help of thermocouple. So that is the main limitation of the thermocouple. Then applications of thermocouple, again thermocouples are most suitable for measuring over the large temperature range and up to 1800 degrees Celsius. These are widely used in the steel industry, heating appliances, manufacturing of electrical equipments like switch gear etc. So the, these are basic applications of the thermocouple. Next is thermistor. Thermistor is a type of resistor with resistance varying according to temperature. The resistance is measured by passing a small measured direct current through it and measuring the voltage drop produced. So here the constructional details of the thermistors are given in this figure. We are having two conductors in between those two conductors, a semiconductor vapor is connected and then again it is again coated with the protective coating. So this is the construction of thermistor. Uh, basically advantage of thermistor is it, since they can be very small are used inside the many other devices as temperature sensing and correction devices because the <coughs> uh, size of the thermistor is very small it can be used in very small equipments also 
thermistors typically work over a relatively small temperature range compared to other temperature sensors and can be very uh, sorry can be very accurate and precise within the range so those are the advantages of the thermistors then applications there are actually two types of the thermistors ptc type and ntc type that is positive temperature coefficient type and negative temperature coefficient type so pct sorry ptc thermistors can be used as current limiting devices for circuit production as replacement for the fuses current through the devices causes a small amount of resistive heating this creates a self reinforcing effect that drives the resistance upwards then ptc thermistors can be used as heating elements in small temperature controlled ovens as the temperature rises resistance increases decreasing the current and heating uh, the resulting in steady state then the ntc thermistors are used as resistance thermometers in low temperature measurements of the order of 10 kelvin ntc thermistors can be used as infrared current limiting devices in power supply circuits they present a higher resistance initially which prevents large currents from flowing at run, turn on and then heat up and become much lower resistance to allow higher current flow during normal operations ntc thermistors are regularly used in automotive applications thermistors are also commonly used in modern digital thermostats and to monitor the temperature of battery packs while charging these are the applications of thermistors then the next point that is rtd resistance temperature detector the resistance temperature detector that is rtd as the name implies are sensors used to measure temperature by co correlating the resistance of the rtd element with the temperature as they are almost invariably made up of platinum they are often called as platinum resistance therm thermometer that is prts rtd elements consist of a length of a fine coiled wire wrapped around a ceramic or glass core the element is usually quite, quite fragile so it is often placed inside a sealed probe to protect it the rtd element is made from a pure material whose resistance at various temperatures has been documented the material has a predictable change in the resistance as the temperature changes it is this predictable change that is used to determine the temperature so basically because of the change in temperature the resistance of the wire is going to change and that change will be proportional to the change in temperature and which is again documented as it is mentioned so uh, for what amount of change of the resistance what will be the change in the temperature that is known to us so from that we can have idea regarding what is the change in the temperature or what will be the temperature at some point advantages and disadvantages of rtds advantages firstly that is the uh, rtds are highly accurate they have low drift during the measurement wide operating range uh, so basically they, they can measure large range of the temperatures and suitable for precision applications as accuracy high accuracy is high we can used for precision applications then disadvantage is difficult to maintain the purity of platinum in a high temperature that is the main disadvantage as we are going to use the platinum wire inside the rtd it is difficult to maintain the purity of platinum at the high temperatures and then the next one is compared to thermistors platinum rtds are the less sensitive to small temperature changes and we already seen that we can measure very small temperatures with the thermistors as small as 10k and uh, at small temperature changes rtds will be having less sensitivity so uh, response time will be more that was regarding rtds the next is bimetallic strip so bimetallic strip is used to convert temperature change into mechanical displacement and thus acts as a temperature sensor basically bimetallic strip is consisting of two strips of different metals which expand at different rates as they are heated usually steel and copper so uh what here the bimetallic strip is made up of is it will be having two different metals uh, joined firmly together steel and copper many times or majority times so what happens uh both the materials that is steel and copper have different thermal conductivities and expansion rates so when we are going to heat the bimetallic strip what is going to happen Uh, copper is going to expand at different rate and steel is going to uh, expand at different rate so what is going to happen copper is going to expand more at less time uh, when compared to steel 
so that bimetallic strip is going to bend at one side that is uh, copper will uh, expand and because of that opposite side of the copper is going to get or other copper uh, side will get more expanded and because of that strip is going to bend and this can be used in different applications such as mechanical clock mechanisms are sensitive to temperature changes which lead to errors in timekeeping a bimetallic strip is used to compensate for this some in some mechanisms next in the regulation of heating and cooling thermostats that operate over a wide range of temperatures the bimetallic strip is mechanically fixed and attached to an electrical power source while the other okay basically the bimetallic strips main common application which we all know is uh, we do use uh, irons or press at the home for ironing the clothes so there is a thermostat that is we are going to set the temperature of the iron uh, for a particular type of cloth and uh, when that temperature reaches we hear the sound of tick tick because that sound is because of the uh, connecting and disconnecting because of the uh, expanding of the bimetallic strip so that is very simple construction but very uh, effective application that we can use it for the connecting and disconnecting power from a heating coil of a iron uh, so basic that is very basic example you can all go through it thank you